Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the SPG backend for it with two, and my name is Ongor Pinsash. My background, I'm interested in software development and in computer science. Uh, I had some few jobs, jobs as a software developer in C Sharp and Java programming languages, and I also had a job in test automation engineering, and I was also interested in creating quality software that led me uh, to the field of functional programming, and currently I'm a Haskell developer, but I'm also learning Idris because I'm really interested in dependent type programming, and I'm interested in compiler engineering. The Idris backend I work on. Uh, the goal for this Idris backend, or for, for myself, is to learn the internals of the Idris compiler, learn the internals of the GHC compiler, and create something uh, which is able to compile Idris uh, source code, but use a library written in Haskell. So there, is, there should be an interface uh, between these two technologies, and we could experiment with dependent type programming using Haskell libraries. And to be able to do that, I had to use GHC Haskell with a twist, but we are going to see what this twist is later on. So the outline of the talk. Some foundations about functional programming compilers and about the theory, uh, some words on the SDG machine, some introduction of the external SPG project, that's basically the GHC with the twist. Introduction to the architecture of the Idris compiler of the different intermediate representations. An introduction to the compile data API hope and hope to compile the IR. So step one, when you create your own Idris backend, is to actually understand uh, the foundations behind these compilers and compiler internals. And for functional programming languages, the intermediate representations are always some uh, variation of the lambda calculus. And lambda calculus here means that we can create anonymous functions as part of some kind of closures. And we also have an operation where we can apply arguments uh, to these functions. So that's kind of the primitive operations of the lambda calculus. And to be able to implement something which runs uh, with a good performance on the machine that we have to extend this lambda calculus and all of these extensions can be represented inside the lambda calculus so we don't give any extra power to the lambda calculus itself but it makes our life easier as compiler developers. What are these extensions? These extensions are, are the let expression when we create a value and we associate that value to a variable in the body of the let expression. We also introduce uh, primitive values like here three as an integer because it's easier to uh, map these exactly introduced primitive values to the machine uh, registers that we have. And the next part we have to introduce the print line function, a uh, function like print line, which basically it's a function call uh, from the runtime system to the operating system, and we have to include this into the runtime because this makes our, our lives easier. And the next extension into the lambda calculus is to represent structured data with some tag uh, associated with some other values. And here we use this, and in this example as the pair value, and we pair the character A with the value one. And if we introduce such a construction that it's a good idea to introduce its eliminator, and its eliminator is basically the case expression where we, uh, where we match on the value and we select a branch or like the alternative and we select the continuation of the computation. All of these can be expressed in, in the lambda calculus, but it's good to have those as primitives uh, in our compiler backend. So the SDG backend for Idris uses the spinous standard G machine from GHC Haskell, and there is a really good introduction from Simon Marlow and Simon Peyton Jones. I really recommend to read that paper. So I mentioned GHC Haskell with a twist, but what the twist is? The twist is the external SDG project uh, written by Chavo Hushka, my friend, who works on this idea and 
he wanted to formalize the SVG machine in Haskell, and he created a GC plugin, which is able to save the, the external STG information. And my STG backend uh, aims the external STG. But as an architecture of the GHC Haskell compiler, like the high, high level overview of this, the GHC Haskell compiler compiles the Haskell source to its uh, intermediate representation, the core intermediate representation, which is a type system. And uh, it, that is very similar to the Lambda calculus. And after it uh, compiles that to the STG, which STG is more like uh, a little bit simpler representation of the Lambda calculus with more restrictions and less types. So SVG doesn't really have a type system and SVG more about the data representation itself. And also from the operational semantics and the, and the denotational semantics at the same time. So that's the trick that Simon um, Amaro and Simon Peyton Johnson introduced there. And from STG, we can generate effective C minus minus code and from C minus minus, we can generate machine code. And trouble, use this pipeline and introduce the plugin uh, between core and STG. So what is external STG? External STG is a GHC independent STG representation, but, it's, but it, it is compatible with STG that comes from the pipeline. And also it can use the pipeline uh, to uh, inject the external SVG and use the pipeline as a code generator. And these are the related projects, the external SVG project, the external SVG interpreter, and the external SVG compiler. The external SVG compiler is kind of straightforward. It, it uses GHC9. But the interpreter is also an interesting idea because what we see here that Chaba defined the SVG machine using a high level Haskell, and that gives us the operational and the denotational semantics written in Haskell. So for us, like normal functional programmers, uh, it's easier to understand what's going on. And this is also improves the possible tooling, like he also plans to in implement something as a time traveling debugger based on the interpreter. So, Hope to use the external SVG to generate execute to but it kind of work out of the box. From the external SVG module, we can simply uh, get an ST, SVG module for the GHC compilation pipeline, and we can use the compile program to uh, compile the top level bindings from this module. So that's that's an easy thing, and we use this to generate the executable using the GHC as a, as a code generator. But I talked a lot about the ex external STG and the STG expressions, but let's see what are those expressions are. If, if you look at the uh, expressions, it's the, those are very similar that we had in the Lambda calculus definition in the foundations, because we have function application with the app, we have a simple value creation with the literal, we have the structured data creation with the conap, we have the primitive function course with the up up, we have introduced the lead binding with the lead. We also introduced the case expressions of, of some odds, and uh, we don't introduce here the lambda abstraction because the lambda abstraction happens to be at the higher level, but those are kind of uh, compiling to top, top level definitions in that in the external speech or in the, in the SDG. And interestingly, a uh, thing to notice that. Uh, here, the arguments for function calls, uh, nor normal function calls, primitive function calls, and tag data application, that those are can be literals or some uh, variables, but not complicated expressions. In binding code, maybe that's possible, but it's not possible in STG. And only the chain the expressions here are, are happening in the STG case which STG case also forces the evaluation. And that information will be very useful in the next slides. So that's a design decision in STG. So my step two, I had to select an Idris IR and if you write your Idris backend, you have to do the same. And there are three different Idris IRs named the lifted depth, the ANF depth and the VM depth. 
and there are differences between these. And coming from top to down, we are uh, getting closer and closer to the, to the machine uh, that we are running or code. But it's good to think about what is your capability for the Idris backend that you want to write. So what is the technology supports and how to represent the information coming from the different, different representations. And, but let's see what are these representations. So the lifted lab, we have the lambda lifted form. That means we moved all the local definitions in lats and in verticals from Idris to the top level, kind of the top level definitions in Idris code. This kind of transformation is straightforward. You could do with, this, with the same thing, or you can you could do by hand, but kind of tedious, and that would break the abstraction in the Idris code. So they are they are introduced for the convenience of the Idris, Idris programmer, uh, but and these lambda lifted forms makes compilation harder, so it's better if we automatically generate uh, these where code closes into lambda lifted form. And the next one is the ANF introduce a variable for each non, non trivial intermediate expression. Each argument of a function is a variable or, or constant. And uh, this is another convenient thing to do uh, because basically uh, we can just simply have all this complicated expression will be. Are, we are saved into this argument. And the next one is the virtual machine definition, which needs to represent closures in, in registers. And that's the kind of the main obstruction there. And from, from those registers, uh, which can contain also functions, you have to implement something as a partial or non-partial non function application. And also here we have the case expressions. So that's uh, something you have to think which fits better to your backend or backend technology. And as I already mentioned in the SDG, that in SDG we have parameters uh, as argument or literals, but straightforward choice was to use the ANF definition. So that was my IDRISAIA choice. So let's see what are these uh, constructors in the ANF in IDRIS. And we have a variable lookup, three different application, a normal saturated function application, and another under application, or an application on a closure. We introduced the lead binding, we introduced the structure data creation using the ACON, we also introduced the primitive function calls via POP, or also we have something as an external primitive. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, we introduced two different case expressions, one for literal matching and one for structured data matching, which is also good because we don't have to mix uh, these things together. Uh, we introduced primitive values using the primitive value constructor, and there are other, another two constructors here. One is the Aries, and one is the uh, crash operation. Crash operation plays a big role in the dependent type functional programming uh, because we can introduce holes in Idris and those holes will be compiled to the crash operation because we can simply say we define partial programs, but those partial, partial programs are explicitly annotated even in this low level IR. And the Idris values is basically when we need information only at the compile time, but we don't need that information anymore at the runtime. So those information will be replaced with the Iris values itself. And the reminder there is the STG definition. So you can, you can wonder how to map R from AN to STG. So how to use the compiler backend of the Idris compiler. If you can write the backend as a plugin for the Idris compiler, and you can use the Idris source, the compiler source as a compiler li library. So that means you can uh, simply uh, extend the compiler with your own backend, and you have to compile your own Idris compiler, which is kind of convenient because you can patch the compiler in this easy way. And what you have to do uh, to compile an Idris program, so what happens when you compile an Idris program, that basically the compiler uh, invokes your compiled function, which gets a closed term, and from that closed term, you get the data and using the get compile data you have to select which label you are subscribing for so i subscribe for the anf definition which will give you a list of main pair with, with the anf definition 
and after you have to implement something which uh, which for me it was the compile SVG function and I had to represent that external SVG definitions in English so I, I mirrored them and I call them English SVG and I use that English SVG to generate some external SVG definitions uh, in a binary format or in some kind of special format which will be parsed by the external SVG compiler as an interlude. I already showed you some code snippets, and those code snippets always uh, contain uh, some comments on top of them, and that kind of helps you hope to read that source and what language are in. And I show you some Haskell codes, that's like a high motivation example, how we would write those things in Haskell. And after that, I can show, I can, and I will show you SVG definitions, but those are written in English, so that's in English syntax. And I also uh, show snippets from the English compiler that, uh, that codes are copy pasted uh, from the compiler slides. So these are these are the things here, and there's and there is there isn't too much syntactical difference between English and Haskell for these code snippets. It's just good to have this uh, annotation. And the next thing I decided to use. ABT in STG for representing all the con all the constructions are uh, coming from Idris because that's a convenient way. Haskell also uses this ABT boxing everywhere. So why wouldn't I change that design decision? So for that, uh, as an example, I hope to represent uh, a Haskell list like data in the STG definition. Uh, we have to use the type constructor from SVG and the type constructor has a list of data constructors and the data constructor uh, has its name and has its data representation. And here the, inter the interesting part or the important part is the data representation itself for the data constructors. Here we have more than, uh, more than two, but I show you all of these two now. One is for the lifted representation and one is for the unlifted rep representation. And these kind of representation controls the data in STG. And that means if we have a lifted representation, then we are kind of defining the data structure with, with uh, their fields uh, as lazy fields. So this data structure will be expected to be only in weak head normal form. Meanwhile, in the strict representation, when we say unlifted rep, uh, that means that we also expect that the value in the constructors will be weak head normal form. So that if you unroll this definition, that means you will have a strict data. If you if you use the lifted rep, then you will have uh, lazy data in the SVG. For hope to compile Idris to something, uh, we need to answer these questions. Hope to compile and represent primitive values, ABTs, special values, uh, primitive operations, hope to compile this ANF expression tree uh, to something else. Uh, what should we do the top level definitions of the ANF? Uh, how the foreign function interface should work? Uh, how to compile Idris modules, even if we have to do that? Uh, and maybe FFI won't be enough. So if there is another option, it, it would be nice to have that another option. Uh, it would be nice to know about that another option. And what should the runtime system minimum support for implementing an Idris backend? So let's look into the primitive values first. Primitive values in the Idris uh, backend, uh, IR, ANF IR, are uh, defined in the core.tt.constant. So those are not that surprising primitive values. It uses uh, inter integer representation and bit representation. It also represents strings and doubles, and it also represents the verb value, which is kind of the value for sequencing IO computations. But the surprising part for, for this constant are basically that uh, we also enumerate the types here as values of the primitive constant. But why should we do that? Because Idris is a, a dependent type programming language, and that means that types are, are values. So here we have to say, I have an int type, which is the value of the constant. And this is also necessary because Idris can pattern match on types so you can write functions that pattern match on types, and if you don't have uh, the capability of being able to do the case expression 
uh, in the IR on, on the type value itself, then you cannot then you cannot compile that code and, and that capability to something as a runnable and that wouldn't make sense if you are using a dependent type programming language. So I decided to uh, represent this information as kind of the top level uh, and standalone Haskell data definitions. If I would write those definitions, these would be written in that way, where I have a, a data constructor, uh, which data constructor uh, con constructs uh, or wraps and unbox data. That's the hash there at the end of these, uh, these fields. And I create a standalone type constructor for that. So let's see how that looks in this as, a, as in SDG. As you remember, we use the type construction, and from the type construction, there will be just one data constructor field. And as I mentioned, there will be this data representation on the STG, and that the data representation on the STG can be the lifted representation unlifted, but for primitives and boxed values, and but for primitives uh, and non boxed values or unboxed values, there are special representation in the, in the STG, and here is the int64 representation. How to represent algebraic data type. As I mentioned before, we use uh, the algebraic data type approach uh, from STG via type con and data con, but in, in the English compiler, this information uh, is not present. Uh, what is needed uh, for the type con, because type con also needs the list of the data constructors, so but that but there isn't any information at the and at level, but in, in the English compiler, the we can get this information out from a higher level definition from the compilation pipeline, which uh, which information stands there in the def data type. And it has a different constructor for data constructors and di different constructor for our type constructors. Uh, but the type constructors also has a list of which, which point, which is a pointer to the data constructors using their, their own unique name. So we are happy and we can compile uh, this definition. But let's see an example. So in, in Idris type system is about dependent types. So there is this nice tool in Idris, which is called DEC, which is short for decidable equality. And it has two constructors, yes and no, but you have to use some information to pair this yes and no. Basically, when you say yes, yes, I have a proof that, that I had uh, some precondition uh, test of like, yes, I had some condition as, or I had a no constructor. In that case, I have to give a proof uh, which proves the negativity of some predicate. And this is represented as a simple data type in Idris. And they, that data type is a parameter and the constructors also have uh, and one, uh, one fields as values. But this is represented as deck with one value and the first uh, first parameter here in the a con deck and basically is the type parameter for the deck and uh, a con for yes and no actually has two parameters from these two parameters the first one is the type constructor from the deck and the second one is the data constructor uh, or the data field uh, from the yes and the no and if you look at the STG's uh, representation of the deck, you can realize that uh, we, we didn't include the first parameter from a deck to the STG deck. And that's because the STG type system is about data representation, and we expect that this data won't be, uh, won't be there. And we create this very special uh, representation. Uh, so we, we omit that information because we don't have a place to fit in. And that introduces a kind of a, a complication, but complication, but uh, that complication can be solved in a different way. And here we have the yes and the no constructors with two uh, points. So hope to implement special values. There are two special values that I had to uh, fiddle with. Uh, the easier one is the Iris value, but which is which is basically just a simple data type in Haskell with one constructor without any parameters and uh, with one type. 
Another one is the Idris type constructors. As I mentioned, Idris is a dependent type functional programming language, and that means that we can pattern match on type, and that means we can generate cases that pattern match on type, and that means that it generates uh, acons a bit with some types, and we don't have uh, a straightforward uh, mapping from this construct construction uh, from Idris to STG, but uh, that can be created or that can be overcome with a, uh, with a single universe of types. So the single universe of types looks like this. I have a universe of type, I call it I type, and I have uh, all the constructors enumerated in that, and I can create this recursive data type in Haskell, and that data type will be uh, will be closed because we compile just one in this program at a time, and we can enumerate all the types uh, using this recursive definition in Haskell from a compiled in this program. So that uh, doesn't uh, need to be uh, witchcrafted. Hope to implement primitive operations. Idris has many primitive operations like arithmetic values, bit operations, and so on. There are two special ones, the believe me and the crash, but the crash is simply just a runtime crash on the and the GCRPS system and the believe me is simply saying that this subtree uh, of value will be the same type of, of a different thing, but we don't need the type information here at the ANF level, so that means we just simply return the original value that we got. And for the other primitives, which are the straightforward ones, that basically we can reuse the uh, primitive operations from GCRPS. As an extra layer, primitive values are boxed, so we need to unbox them, call the uh, primitive operation from GCRPS, and after uh, box them again. But this is not that straightforward in STG because we don't have the pattern match construction in STG, we just have the case expression, and that case expression basically uh, need to be used as, in a chained manner, and those chain uh, will we will generate something that this function calls, uh, and the first chain unbox the first value, the second chain unbox the second value, and we call the primitive operation and we box them. To, co to compile this to STG will be something similar uh, like this. We introduce the first case with its alternative, with the binder for the AU, we introduce the second case with its alternative to the in to the uh, binder of BU, we introduce the third one, which is basically the function call for the uh, uh, calling the primitive operation plus, and that function call uh, also binds some variable x, and that x is used uh, to create the structure data. And basically here, we show how the control flow is represented in, in STG, and we almost used all the STG con constructors, except for the lid and the left. The next part is the compiling uh, your intermediate representation to, uh, to some expression, to the backend expression that you, that you work with. And for STG, it's very simple. All the three applications will be used by STG app or will be represented by STG app. Looking up a variable, it's interesting. With STG, if you say with an empty, our argument list is interpreted as a variable lookup. Uh, we use the data construction uh, via the con. We have the primitive operations via the op app. We have the external primitives and using the external app. Uh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, soon. Uh, we have two different case expressions. We need to uh, use the STG case for that. We need to use primitive values, but for that we have to immediately box them, so that's kind of easy. And after, uh, with the erased, we can use the erased type I introduced, and with the crash, we just simply call the error runtime function from GHC, or from uh, GHC RPS. But I mentioned the external primitives, and those external primitives are basically the primitives that can be defined as a foreign function interface named as external, and that's kind of uh, working together with the uh, external data definition when you implement your FFI. But I skipped deliberately the let expression because that needs some explanation. Idris is a strict language, meanwhile, 
uh, Haskell and SDG can represent uh, laziness as well at the same time. So we have to be careful about how to compile that expressions into SDG. So that expressions here means please evaluate the A1 subtree, SSA that value to the variable B in the in the body of uh, the variable of uh, the variable A2. So that means we, we are forcing uh, the evaluation here. And in STG, the left is lazy, so we cannot use it here, but the only construction which forces some value is the STG keys, and that's how we introduce this kind of lead, lead bindings in STG. The next one, hope to compile uh, definitions. So when you get your compiled data, and that compiled data will contain uh, entries for, dif for the different la layers, uh, different intermediate representation, and uh, that information will be there with, with the name and the top level definition. And in AM and there are four uh, different kinds of top, top level definition, one for the function, which is not surprising at all. Uh, we have the ACON data construction, but I don't use that information because I have to extract that information uh, from one layer above from the definition, so I just skip that. Uh, we have foreign function calls and errors. And let me talk about the errors first. The errors basically are uh, what I mentioned before, when we write partial programs in Indris using calls, that will be compiled to this top level uh, definition, which is an explicit information that your program is partial, and you shouldn't be surprised that it would uh, throw some runtime exception if you want to run that on the production code. So this is something as a really good thing, because you can implement your backend saying dash dash production, and that means whenever I see an A error, I don't compile this code thing because you want to do it in production. So that's a really, really useful thing. And the next one is the foreign function, where uh, basically you get the information or the user defined uh, foreign strings uh, with the type information associated with this uh, foreign function using these are the parameters uh, in this CF type form. And I also expect uh, as a return type for this. And that's the and that's the definition, and we use this top lifted definition, and also we compile the rest with the uh, because uh, MK error and functions are ANM definitions, and we have to uh, define for the foreign function also represent that as an SDG, but that's kind of easy. As a note for what a CF type could be for the foreign function interface, it could be these very primitive, very simple primitive types, but there are some extra ones like pointers, like garbage collected pointers, some very special pointers for buffers, the IO, IO uh, token for computation, and that's good for implementing the uh, IO function interface. And we have functions in that uh, foreign function, that means that actually we can implement callbacks, and that introduces an interesting concept between uh, between STG and uh, Idris, or like between Haskell and Idris. Uh, we can uh, say that IOS is for effectful computation, and we can introduce user-defined types that, that works well with the external definition. And there is an extra constructor which is inherited by the C backend, uh, and that, that extra constructor is basically the destruct but you don't have to implement that in your backend. So hope to implement foreign function that is, it receives is the FFI string approach, which uh, is basically when the user has to give the type of the function and some string that will be interpreted or understood by the backend or compiled by the backend. And uh, that is on the shoulders of the implementer of the backend. What I decided to, to be the, these FFI strings. And these FFI strings for me are like the top level functions of a Haskell module. And those, uh, those functions must be qualified by their packages because uh, when we call STG app, uh, which is with the function which is not defined in a local module, that we have to give this fully qualified name. And for that, uh, it's good if the user is. Uh, kind of thinking which package should or should be used 
at the at the set of i. But here again, immediately the question ar arises: What about strictness in STG? So if you remember, we had a lazy data representation by a lifted rep and unlifted rep, and lifted rep meant uh, that I'm here in the just weak and normal form, and I don't want to uh, strictly evaluate all, all of my parameters. And that's, that's the default data representation in the SKG machine. So if we generate code from the Idris compiler, which, which create uh, values or which consumes values uh, or mirrors uh, the data definition, then it's, if we use uh, the lifted representation, that, that won't be a problem because we can get information uh, from the FFI calls uh, to, to a library in Haskell. Uh, but also, uh, Idris is a strict language, and that means that we have some strictness going on, but th that's not that different because basically we use the STG case to force this evaluation. So it's, it's the same thing as I would write a strict function in Haskell because at that, ver at that, at that version, I, I would be in the situation that the compiler used the STG case. So that as so as we use the STG as a common ground between uh, Haskell and Idris, that means uh, we are safe, and we can and we can simply use these strict uh, Idris functions in the lazy Haskell context, as we would use strict strict Haskell functions in the lazy in the lazy Haskell context. Hope to compile modules. The compile data contains all the top level definitions. There are no module definitions there. So there, is, there isn't any problem around compiling modules because that's not the responsibility of the backend because here the backend is the, just the code generation backend. Uh, and for that, I just simply generate a big STG module, but there will be some improvement there. Hope to end that code snippets. So when you do FFI or when, when you do external, externals uh, using the same approach as FFI, then you write your code in, in Haskell, then after you go and you write your corresponding code in, in English, but that needs to be key in sync, or you can do uh, some uh, some other approach where you, where you use the elaboration part of the Idris compiler, and that, that is basically an elaboration model with many tools, and you can parse strings, and you can simulate things like macros of like template Haskell behavior in a file safe way. And what should the runtime system support? So this is the minimum. It should support both primitive values. Otherwise, uh, conversion from primitives uh, in, believe me, would be a very uh, tedious job. And it's good uh, also for memory management. It should represent uh, structured data via data constructors. For me, I had to get the information for data and tile constructor association. Maybe your backend wouldn't need that. And of course, your backend should have at least a good memory management. La last step, in your Idris program, I'm still not there. I'm actively developing the STG backend for Idris, uh, but it has a steady, steady progress, and I'm happy uh, with the current uh, development, and I'm currently in a great refactor of the code. So the future work, as I'm in a great refactor, a uh, separate STG module generation. So nothing stops me to mimic uh, the uh, STG modules or, the, or mimic the Idris modules in the STG modules, and maybe that would be speed up the compilation in, in the Haskell side. I really would like to do a better editing of, in between Idris and uh, Haskell, uh, like so something which we can do in Angular when we say this EDT is represented using its uh, data constructors in Haskell. And that would make uh, the code compilation and generation easier in the STG backend side. And last but not least, I really would like to expose the GHC runtime uh, features into the Iblis land uh, using uh, wrapping these features as Iblis, Iblis libraries and these features like the STM. As a conclusion, so if you want to write uh, Idris uh, to backend, 
you have to just to think about the compilation of a simple lambda calculus snipe language with a lot of plumbing, but it's straightforward because the Idris back backend is written in a, in a simple functional programming way. There, is, there isn't too much dependent on the type programming go, uh, are going on, and that that's, uh, makes this translation easier. Uh, values should be represented as box values because of the conversion. Uh, dynamic memory management is needed, but modern languages usually have it. Mix and match of different library components. Uh, FFI can get tricky for non-own libraries. Uh, so here, in, the, in these two points, that basically you don't have to implement the full support for Idris, Idris uh, for all these libraries. You can simply use the Idris as a very strong DSL in your ecosystem. And a little bit my experiment is about that. So thank you very much. That was my talk. And if you have any questions, just please ask.